thought about a leadership example that really shaped my leadership philosophy, um, it's actually not a positive leadership story. Um, I, as I come up on 22 years, I am uh, months away from retiring. I have a myriad of phenomenal leadership examples, role models, uh, experiences. Um, and I think they shaped me in ways that I'm very grateful. But um, I think you can also learn from the negative experiences about what you don't wanna do, um, how you don't wanna make people feel. And so that experience for me early in my career was actually pretty profound and really impacted the leader I attempted to be. Um, so I am a 2001 Coast Guard Academy graduate. Um, and if you recall, that means I graduated months before the September um, 11th uh, World Trade Center attacks. Um, and so I graduated Coast Guard Academy and immediately went to be what we call a summer ensign, which means I stayed at the academy for a couple months to support the summer training. Um, that also means that I did not arrive at my first unit with my classmates. And so approximately two, three months after they arrived, I arrived alone. I, I gotten, um, I was uh, de detailed to the Coast Guard Cutter Tahoma out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. And so I arrived on the ship as the only ensign on that particular day. My classmates had had an opportunity to get going and make relationships. And so I was a little self-conscious about that. I'm 22 years old, young, really building my professional reputation. Who am I gonna be? Um, and so uh, nervous and, I, and anxious about that. And I got to the ship and immediately kind of felt like an outsider. Uh, we did not have a very large wardroom of women. Um, we also had a very small, um, the crew was a very small percentage of women and even less people of color. And so I felt that immediately. But in addition, I just didn't feel like I had a running mate. I didn't feel a part of that crew. Um, and so shortly after arriving, 9-11 uh, happened. And we were actually on patrol heading to um, New York for Fleet Week. And we had taken a port call in Newport, Rhode Island. I was very excited about an opportunity to get home for a little bit because again, I wasn't really connecting with the crew of the wardroom, um, didn't really feel comfortable. I couldn't put my finger on it. No one had done anything to me, but I didn't feel included. Um, and so I was excited about getting some downtime, getting away from the ship for a little bit. And that morning of September 11th, we uh, pulled into Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, within a couple hours, the first uh, World Trade Center was attacked. Um, and I think like most Americans, I didn't understand what was happening. I, I know I didn't know if this was an accident. I think there was confusion. I remember calling my mother back in Georgia, uh, who was a school teacher and kind of saying, yeah, did you see that? I don't know what's going on. And then the second plane uh, hit the second tower. Now we recognize that this was terrorism, that this was actually a really bad thing. Um, being young and naive, I immediately thought, well, I guess we're not going to New York. I guess there won't be a fleet week. Um, and there wasn't a fleet week, but we went to New York. Uh, we were one of the closer ships that could respond. And instead of having this port call and going home, we immediately uh, went full speed ahead to New York. Everybody on the crew was nervous, um, didn't know what we were getting into. I think the country didn't understand at this moment in time what was happening, et cetera. And so we, uh, a lot of general quarters, uh, not drills, but actually, you know, uh, when you're running old ship engines at all full speed ahead, some things go wrong. And so high stress, a um, lot of uh, concern from the crew and we get in the New York Harbor and you could hear a pin drop. Um, there was smoke everywhere. There was this undeniable smell of burning metal and just confusion about what is going on. And, and for the next couple months, it was really hard for all of us. And so you add to that, that I did not feel a part of this crew. I didn't have a place to go with my emotions, about my concerns, about my fears. I didn't really feel fully supported by my supervisors, et cetera. And so that was a really tough two years for me. Um, started off with a kind of a crisis moment and I never really got a groove. Um, I spent the two years there 
going through the motions. I was uh, marginally successful. Um, I met all the milestones, but I never, I never connected with this career um, and with that cutter. And I think I look back and talk to shipmates and classmates who I don't think would have understood that, that I wasn't getting those feelings. So I spent, I literally chose my next duty station with the expectation that I would be getting out. Um, I selected a place where I could go to grad school and kind of find the next career. Um, as luck would have it, or I am a believer, I think as, as God ordained for me, I went to New Orleans, Louisiana, um, and I connected. Um, I immediately got involved uh, at the recommendation of a uh, officer who was junior, a junior officer, but senior to me, recommended that I take part in the National Naval Officers Association. That is an organization that is an affinity group with the uh, goal of professional development and mentorship for African-American officers. In that group, I found support in family, not just at work, but in the community. Um, I all of a sudden like came alive. Um, I connected with my coworkers. I started to make relationships with my supervisors and getting professional um, advice. I had an opportunity to come here to DC and sit on a panel where I received more mentorship and encouragement to go to graduate school. I went to graduate school on my off hours and got a degree. And the next thing you know, Hurricane Katrina hits. And uh, this time I went into a very difficult, tragic situation because I was a New Orleans resident. Um, I lost my own home and my own things. But while that was difficult, I did this as a part of a team. Um, we worked together to do, you know, through some very long hours and some very difficult evenings and difficult nights, uh, difficult calls and difficult rescues while we managed that response from New Orleans. Um, around that time, I had my own personal tragedy. My father was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so I was dealing with quite a bit. But again, I had a family and network of support in my coworkers and felt a part of my Coast Guard community. Mm -hmm.